Dumb Husky and His White Cat Shizun. Chapter 13 This Venerable One's Bride there was no need for Mo Ran to point it out as Chu Wanning had already figured that out a while ago. Those people were chatting and laughing, but they didn't know where the voices came from. Those who were sitting or standing, gesturing and toasting, their faces were as blank as paper. What do we do? Do we have to go in and drink with them? Chu Wanning was not amused by Mo Ran's poorly timed joke, as he lowered his head in thought. At this moment, there was a sound of rustling footsteps in the distance. Two long lines of people emerged from the hazy fog, slowly approaching the main building from the distance. Chu Wanning and Mo Ran subconsciously hid behind the rocks, and the two lines of people approached, led by coquettishly smiling golden boy on one side and a golden girl on the other. These two people had clearly defined facial features. Their faces were colorful, and in the nightlight, they looked like the paper dolls burned for the dead. Each of them was holding a red candle in one hand. The body of the candle was as thick as the child's arm, with dragon and phoenix seals entwined on it. As the candle burned, the rich fragrance of the powder wafted to their noses, and Mo Ran almost fainted again. Fortunately, the wound that Chu Wanning stabbed in his arm still hurt, and he squeezed the wound again, finally keeping his consciousness clear. Chu Wanning gave him a look. Mo Ran, ugh, I can't believe this trick works. After a pause, he wondered again, Shizun, why don't you need to cut yourself to stay awake? Chu Wanning, this fragrance doesn't work on me. Ah? Uh, why? Chu Wanning said coldly, I have good concentration. Mo Ran. Led by the golden boy and girl, the two lines climbed up the steps. Chu Wanning moved his gaze back, looked for a second, and suddenly let out aloha. Chu Wanning was rarely surprised, so Mo Ran was immensely curious. So, he followed his line of sight and what he saw also amazed him. He saw that those people who were swaying in the procession were all dead bodies with closed eyes. They had pale skin and kept the appearance they had when they were alive. Most of them were very young. They were in their twenties, both men and women. One figure was very familiar. It's Chen Bohuan, the Chen family's eldest son, who they had seen in the coffin earlier had again appeared in this procession. His eyes were closed. He followed the scent of candles and walked slowly. Next to him was something different from the others. Others had corpses walking next to them while he walked next to a paper mache ghost bride. While Chen Bohuan was not much of big deal, when the procession came to the end and they saw the people at the end of the two lines, the blood drained from Mo Ran's face. Shi Mei and Chen Yao had their head hang low and were following behind the lines of dead bodies. Both of them had their eyes closed. Their faces were as white as snow. Their walking posture was no different from those of the dead people in front of them making it difficult to determine whether they were still alive or not. Mo Ran's mind exploded. He jumped up and wanted to rush over, but Chu Wanning suddenly grabbed his shoulders, hold on. But Chi Mei. I know. Chu Wanning stared at the procession slowly moving forward and whispered, don't move rashly. Look over there, there is a spirit barrier. If you rush past it, the barrier will activate and I'm afraid that all the faceless ghosts in the yard will rush at you, and things will get out of control. Chu Wanning is a master of barrier enchantments. He recognized these enchantments well and his eyes were razor sharp when it comes to these matters. Mo Ran found that at the entrance to the banquet yard, there was a nearly transparent blockade. The golden boy and girl walked to the front of the courtyard. They gently blew on the cupped candle flame. The flames fluttered and then they slowly, passed through the layer of barriers and walked into the courtyard. The men and women behind them followed them one after the other, passing through the transparent barrier without any issue. The faceless people in the yard drinking wedding wine turned their heads, watching the men and women who entered, laughing and applauding. Chu Wanning said, Go, follow them. When you cross the barrier, remember not to breathe and keep your eyes closed. Also, no matter what happens, copy what the corpses are doing and never speak. 
he didn't need to say anything more. Mo Ran eagerly wanted to save Shimei, and immediately followed Chu Wanning into the group of corpses. The number of corpses in the two lines are equal. Chu Wanning stood behind Shimei, and Mo Ran could only stand behind Chen Yao. The lines move very slowly, Mo Ran glanced over at Shimei several times. All he could see was his pale profile and a section of white neck that was helplessly drooping. It was hard to keep up the act all the way to the boundary. The two concentrated and held their breath, smoothly walking through to the courtyard. After entering, they found out that the area inside was much larger than it looked like from the outside. In addition to the three-story main building, the courtyard was lined with a hundred or so small rooms, each of which had a red letter of happiness in their window and a red lantern. The faceless guests suddenly stood up. Salutes were fired and Suana horns were blown. A faceless salute officer in front of the building sang in waves, the auspicious hour has arrived, and the bride and groom have entered the garden. Mo Ran was stunned. What? You meant these two lines of dead bodies are the bride and groom? He turned his head to ask for help from Chu Wanning, but the brows of Baidu Immortal were furrowed. He was deeply immersed in his own thoughts, unable to extricate himself, and didn't bother to look at Mo Ran. Mo Ran felt that all his uncle's hard work might be in vain. Going down the mountain to gain experience with this kind of Shizun, was really more damaging to his pride than if he had gone without a master. Suddenly a group of laughing little children rushed out from the courtyard, dressed in bright red clothes with their hairs in pigtails tied with white head ribbons. They flocked like fish to either side of the lines and began pulling one person each, leading them to the rooms at the sides. Mo Ran didn't know what to do so he mouthed to Chu Wanning, Shizun, what should I do? Chu Wanning shook his head, pointing to the wave of dead bodies that followed the boy and girl scattered in front of him. The meaning was clear, follow them. There was no choice but to let a boy with a bun pull him forward, stumbling into one of the side rooms. As soon as he entered, the boy waved his sleeve in the air, and the door closed with a bang. Mo Ran stared at the little boy, wondering what the faceless brat wanted to do to him. In his previous life, Chu Wanning rescued Shimei first and then broke the illusion. He didn't do anything the entire time then as Chu Wanning easily removed the evil spirits. And then all he did was relished in the wonderful afterglow of kissing Shimei. Afterwards, he actually didn't listen much when Chu Wanning reported the incident. But now the situation had completely changed. He didn't know what was going to happen next, so he could only brace himself for any eventualities. In the room there is a dressing table, an upright standing bronze mirror and a black and red robes embroidered with Ruyi patterns hanging on a wooden frame. The boy patted the stool and motioned for Mo Ran to sit down. Mo Ran realized that the ghosts here weren't very clever. They were pretty stupid in fact. As long as he didn't speak, they couldn't tell the dead from the living, so he sat in front of the dressing table like the child wanted. The little boy rustled over and started to help him freshen up and change his clothes. Suddenly, a Haitang flower drifted in from the window and landed leisurely in the water inside the copper basin. Mo Ran's eyes lit up. This Haitang was called Yuhang of the Night Sky, which was specifically used by Chu Wanning for silent messaging. He picked up the Haitang from the water basin and the flower instantly stretched and bloomed in his palm, revealing a gleam of light gold in the center. He twisted the golden light on his fingertips and put it to his ears. Chu Wanning's voice rang in his ears. Mo Ran, I have confirmed with Tianwen that this is the illusion created by the Master of Ceremony deity in Kaidi Town. It has been enshrined by the villagers for a hundred years and gradually cultivated into something more. As long as there are more ghost marriages, its power will grow stronger, so it loves to organize these wedding ceremonies. Those corpses lined up in two lines should be the ghost couples that the people of Kaidi Town have brought together under its witness over the past hundreds of years. It likes this kind of activities. Every night, it summons those corpses to the illusionary realm and conducts another ghost marriage, and each time it conducts it, it grows even stronger. Mo Ran thought to himself, 
what a deviant. When this deity is bored, they'll match up boys and girls. What kind of deity is this? It might have developed into a sentient being, but its brain must not have been able to develop for it to constantly match up male corpses and female corpses even when they were already matched and summon the dead married corpses from the grave every night again and again. Was this group of corpses that good looking? Or was this master of ceremony deity just crazy? Chu Wanning continued, its true body isn't here. Don't act rashly. Follow the instructions of the golden boy and girl for a while. Since it wants to absorb the power from the ghost marriages, it will inevitably show itself in the end. Mo Ran wanted to ask, where's Shimei? How's Shimei? As if he could read his mind, Chu Wanning said, there's no need to worry about Shimei. He, like Madame Chen, was bewitched by the fragrance powder and temporarily lost consciousness. It seemed that Chu Wanning had already considered the problem very carefully as he explained things clearly to Mo Ran to keep him from wondering. Take care of yourself. Leave everything else to me. After that, the voice disappeared. At the same time, the boy took care of Mo Ran's attire. He looked up and saw that the face in the bronze mirror was beautiful, the corners of his lips naturally raised, his eyebrows were clean and fresh, his collars were properly folded with his auspicious robe of flaming red. His long hair was tied with a white ribbon. He really looked like a proper bridegroom. The boy made a gesture of would you please and the door of the closed room creaked open. Standing by the corridor is a row of corpses in auspicious clothes, both men and women. It seems that the clay head of this master of ceremony deity was indeed not very bright and only intent on conducting the ghost marriage ceremony disregarding the pairing of the couple. Whether it was man and woman, man and man or woman and woman, he didn't care. There was only one line of dead bodies standing on this side of the corridor, and the other line was on the opposite side. They were too far away, and he couldn't see whether Chu Wanning and Shi Mei had come out. The procession was moving forward slowly, and every now and then the sound of the chanting of the officials in the building could be heard. The marriage of one pair after another was slowly being completed. Mo Ran took a look at Chen Yao in front of him and felt that something was wrong. After pondering for a while, when the line was gradually shortening and the last few pairs were about to take their turn, he finally understood. Ah! In accordance to the procession, does that mean the person in front of him is going to be married to Shime? Wouldn't that mean he's going to be paired with that little bitch Chu Wanning? This can't be. At that moment, the former emperor of the human realm was really unhappy with the situation. He grimaced and unceremoniously pulled Chen Yao, and cut in line and stood in front of her. The little boy behind him was taken aback for a moment, but Mo Ran quickly put on the expression of a hanged ghost with a bowed head, drooping down and mixing in with the corpses. Those golden boys and girls with low cultivation levels were in a daze, probably too dumb to figure out what had happened so they didn't react. This made Mo Ran happy. He followed the line enthusiastically, ready to walk to the end so that he could meet with Shimei on the other side of the corridor. At that time, Chu Wanning glanced at Shimei who were standing in front of him, and thought for a while of what dangers may lay ahead. Chu Wanning may be very strict and speak harshly, harsh enough that others find him unbearable but he is actually soft-hearted. As long as he is around, he would never put his disciple in any sort of danger. Therefore, he tugged at Shimei and pulled the unconscious man behind him while he stood in Shimei's original position as his turn came. The ghost bridesmaid standing at the end of the corridor was holding a black and red tray. Seeing Chu Wanning coming over, she chuckled with a girl's crisp voice while her face remained devoid of any features. Greetings and congratulations to the bride, she is beautiful and white. Chu Wanning's face instantly darkened. Be our bride? Do you have no eyes? He looked at the blank face of the ghost bridesmaid again and held back a gasp. She really doesn't have any fucking eyes. The ghost bridesmaid smiled and picked up the red gauze veil in the tray. Raising her jade-like arms and pale hands, he covered Chu Wanning's face. Then she stretched out her cold hand, 
gently held Chu Wanning arms, and said with a sweet smile, Could the lovely bride follow me please? End chapter. Dumb Husky and his white cat Shizun. Chapter 14. This venerable one gets married. The red veil was thin and hung in front of his eyes. Although he could still see things, he couldn't see them clearly. Chu Wanning had sullen eyebrows and a calm face as he was brought to the flower hall by the ghost bridesmaid. He looked up through the soft red gauze, seeing the person standing there, the temperature of Chu Wanning's whole body suddenly dropped several degrees. Mo Ran was also dumbfounded. No, shouldn't it be Shi Mei who come out? The bride in front of him had bright red makeup and his face is covered by a veil. Although his facial features were slightly blurred under the veil, it was still Chu Wanning's handsome face with murderous expression that is staring straight at him with his eyes filled with the intent to kill. Mo Ran. He was at a loss at first, and then his expression gradually became extremely complicated. After all kinds of emotions cycled on his face, a strange silence settled between them. Chu Wanning and him looked at the other, the atmosphere becoming extremely embarrassing. The golden boy and girl behind the two of them chuckled. They clapped their hands and began to sing. The clear water for the Jade Emperor waves, the ghost mandarin ducks are greeted with flowers. In the coffin, they lie in the same bed, before life, the intention is clear after death. From now on, they will be together in the underworld, and the lonely souls will never be apart from each other. The lyrics were eerie, but they were also full of melancholic feelings. If he could speak, there was only one word Mo Ran wanted to say. Bah. But he couldn't speak. There is a pair of paper mache men and women in front of the stage. Although they had no faces, they were dressed richly and gorgeously. They appeared to represent the middle-aged family members of the bride and groom. The official of the ceremony began to sing with a humble tone, the bride is charming and shy, with low eyebrows and soft eyes, a red veil covering her face and delicate smile. Please come and let the groom lift the veil. Mo Ran was originally very reluctant, but when he heard this, he almost suffocated trying to hold his laughter back. Ha 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 ha, the bride is charming and shy, ah ha 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 ha. Chu Wanning's face was grim as he closed his eyes while holding back his anger, trying hard to ignore what he was hearing. The ghost bridesmaid laughed and handed Mo Ran a folding fan. Fan and good are pronounced the same, which means that the marriage is of good fate. Would the groom please lift the bride's veil? Mo Ran held back his laughter, but acted kindly. He held the fan handle to lift the light veil in front of Chu Wanning's face. His eye smiled cheekily, as he took a look at Chu Wanning's expressive face. As if feeling the sneering gaze of the other party, Chu Wanning, who had been enduring it for a while, did not hold back. He opened his eyes abruptly, the pair of eyes flashing with lightning, gaze as sharp as a drawn sword, his expression murderous. His red gaze seemed to match his fiery red clothes. Although the intensity didn't lessen, the glint in his eyes caused by anger and grievance actually look romantic in an intense way. Mo Ran looking at these eyes, unconsciously startled and his smile instantly froze. The Shizun in front of him was suddenly so similar to the one in his previous life that he almost forgot what day it was. Even though it was only for a moment, it was enough to make Mo Ran break out in a cold sweat. He had once done three vicious things to Chu Wanning. Firstly, he destroyed his cultivation by using a lethal method. Secondly, he humiliated him by forcing Chu Wanning to have sex with him. Thirdly. Thirdly, it was the most painful thing he did in his previous life, and it was also the thing he regretted the most. Of course, the Emperor of the Human Realm wouldn't admit that he regretted something he had done, but he couldn't escape the internal suffering it brought in the end. Damn it! Why did he think of that crazy past again and of Chu Wanning from back then? Mo Ran shook his head and bit his lip, trying to shake off that memory of Chu Wanning's face and focus on the person in front of him. Chu Wanning has been staring at him with eyes that screamed I'll kill you. Mo Ran didn't want to provoke this prick, so he had to pretend to play innocent with a helpless smile. 
the official said, the bride and groom will be performing the rite of washing. The so-called rite of washing is where the bride and groom wash their own hands and afterwards wash the other's hand. The ghost bridesmaid brought a porcelain jug filled with clean water and lifted the jug to ask the two of them to wash their hands above the basin where the used water would flow. Chu Wanning's face was full of disgust, but he had to wash Mo Ran's hand after washing himself. Because Mo Ran was a little distracted, he looked quite restrained, silently washing Chu Wanning's hand. Chu Wanning however didn't have a good temper. He splashed Mo Ran with the whole pot and soaked half of his sleeves. Mo Ran stared at the wet half of his sleeves for a while. His mind was wandering but there was no expression on his face except for some subtle luster flowing deep in his dark eyes. He thought in a daze. Chu Wanning hasn't changed, has never changed. What he does, how he thinks, in his past life and in his present life, he was exactly the same, he has not changed a bit. He slowly raised his head. For just a moment, he felt that he was standing on Shi Shang Peak in front of the Wushan Palace. Chu Wanning walked towards him from the bottom of the stretch of imperial steps, and the next moment he would kneel down in front of him. That noble head would fall to the ground, and his straight spine would be bent and humiliated. Chu Wanning would lie down in front of him and show deference. The rite of washing is complete. The ghost bridesmaid suddenly sang a long song, snapping Mo Ran out of his thoughts. He regained his senses abruptly and met Chu Wanning's eyes. The dark pupils gleamed with cold light, like a saber covered with snow, which was truly frightening. Mo Ran. Ugh, his previous life was his previous life after all. Just thinking about Chu Wanning kneeling down to him was enough for this life. The price he would have to pay to make it really happen was too great. After the rite of washing ceremony, there is the rite of exchanging vows, and then the rite of drinking from nuptial cups. The ghost bridesmaid sang slowly, the couple will drink one cup of wine together, and from now on, in this world, they will never be separated. The cups were crossed and then they worshipped the heavens together. Chu Wanning really seemed to be getting really mad. His slightly upturned phoenix eyes narrowed dangerously. Mo Ran estimated that he is very close to pounding the master of ceremony deity into the mud. But with Chu Wanning like this, he really can't look at him as every he did, it takes him back to those messy and dirty memories from which he might not be able to drag himself out. The first bow pay respect to the heavens. He thought since this is just all pretense, Chu Wanning would be too arrogant and stubborn to kneel. Mo Ran didn't expect that he would completely follow through the ceremony despite of the twitch in his eyebrows. Closing his eyes, Chu Wanning did kneel down and bow together with him. The second bow pay respect to the family. Come on, just kneel towards those two faceless paper men, they represent the family. The third bow, pay respect to each other dash. Chu Wanning's eyes were half-lidded. Without even looking at Mo Ran, he turned around, took a deep breath and knelt down in a hurry while clenching his teeth together. Unexpectedly, the two were really out of sync. They got too close and banged their heads together. Chu Wanning sucked in a breath of pain, clutching his forehead. He raised his moist eyes and stared fiercely at Mo Weiyu who also rubbed his forehead. Mo Ran felt he had to say, I'm sorry. Chu Wanning didn't say anything. With a gloomy expression, he just rolled his eyes. Then there was the hair nodding right. The official sang, nodding the hair of husband and wife, to symbolize the love between them. The ghost bridesmaid handed over the golden scissors and Mo Ran couldn't help but shrink back, lest Chu Wanning be displeased and stab him to death. Chu Wanning seemed to have this intention but in the end, he only cut off a piece of the other's hair. He put them into the pouch presented by the golden boy and girl and they were put away by the bride Chu Wanning. Mo Ran was tempted to ask him, you won't use my hair to curse me in a fit of anger, right? The tribute officer sang, the marriage right, is complete dash. Both were relieved and got up from the ground. Unexpectedly, the official yelled leisurely at the next moment. The time has come to send the bride to the bridal chamber. What? The 
Hell. Mo Ran froze instantly. A mouthful of old blood almost spewed out of him. What a joke. If he dared to sleep with Chu Wanning now, this wedding was going to be a real fucking marriage. If he should die beneath a peony flower asterisk, he would still be charming as a ghost. No, the person he wanted in his two lifetimes was the untainted Shimei, not this cold-blooded devil Chu Wanning who would tie up anyone who coveted him and throw them into the mud pond to humiliate them. Note, peony flower is a metaphor for a beautiful woman. Is it too late to run away from this wedding? End chapter Dumb Husky and his white cat Shizun Chapter 15 This venerable one's first time seeing this kind of Unveiling for the wedding night Of course, he can only think about escaping this wedding ceremony. After all, Shimei is still here, and he couldn't leave before him, no matter what he said. It's just that this master of ceremony deity is too fucking punctual. Mo Ran's face turned blue, and his nose was scrunched. Who cares about all the wedding rituals? Why do you care if they use the bridal chamber or not? Moreover, everyone is fucking dead. The body is stiff. How could they use the bridal chamber? As for Chu Wanning's face at the moment, he didn't dare look at it. He kept his eyes on the carpet and tried to play dumb. Right now, he especially wanted to grab the master of ceremony deity, whose actual body hasn't revealed itself yet and scream at him fuck. You. Motherfucker. The golden boy and girl surrounded the two and pushed them to the back hall where there was a coffin which was painted bright red. It was huge, twice the size of an ordinary coffin, and looked exactly the same as the one that had been dug up earlier. Chu Wanning hesitated for a moment, then he understood. Mo Ran also immediately understood the master of ceremony deity and instantly heave a sigh of relief. Of course, the dead can't do anything in the actual bridal chamber. The so-called bridal chamber referred to being sealed in the same coffin and carried down to be buried together to complete the so-called buried in the same grave. At this time, the golden boy and girl also confirmed their thoughts, first, Please invite the bride into the bridal chamber. Chu Wanning flicked his wide sleeve to the side and lay in the coffin with a cold expression. Then invite the groom into the bridal chamber. Mo Ran blinked when he reached at the opening of the coffin and saw that Chu Wanning had already occupied most of the space. Although the coffin was spacious, if two grown men lay in it, it will be a bit tight. He laid in, inevitably pressing into Chu Wanning's wide hem and was met with an angry glare from the other man. The pair of golden boy and girl circled the coffin and sang again the gloomy but vaguely melancholy song from before. The clear water for the Jade Emperor waves, the ghost mandarin ducks are greeted with flowers. In the coffin, they lie in the same bed, before life, the intention is clear after death. From now on, they will be together in the underworld, and the lonely souls will never be apart from each other. After singing, the boy slowly pushed up the coffin lid. With a muffled bang, their surroundings instantly went dark. Chu Wanning and Mo Ran were sealed in the coffin. The coffin was extremely thick, and when he spoke in a low voice, no one outside could hear him. Chu Wanning raised his hand to put a sound-blocking barrier to ensure that the sound inside would not escape outside. After that was done, the first thing he said was, Move over, you're pressing into my arm. Mo Ran. It seems like there are more important things going on than pressing into your arm, right? Despite his internal complaints, Mo Ran still moved aside. A little more, I can't stretch my legs out. He moved again. Keep moving. Don't touch my face. Mo Ran was disgruntled, she's on. My whole body is already pressed against the coffin wall, what else do you want? Chu Wanning finally huffed and stopped talking. Mo Ran shrank into the corner for a while. Suddenly, he felt the coffin start to shake. The people outside lifted up the coffin, shaking it, and began to move slowly in an unknown direction. Mo Ran's ears perked up and he listened to the movement outside, thinking that Shimei could be trapped in a coffin with Chen Yao at this moment. 
He couldn't help but feel upset, but there was nothing he could do. Chu Wanning's barrier was very powerful. The sound inside couldn't escape, but the sound outside couldn't get in as well. Through the coffin wood, he could hear the sound of firecrackers, suana horns, and drums. Mo Ran asked, these demons and ghosts really have this much spare time. Where are they going to carry the coffin? It was very dark inside the coffin. They couldn't see each other's faces and could only hear each other's voice, as the custom in Kaidi town dictates, they should carry the coffin to the earth temple outside of town. Moran nodded, listening attentively, and said. She's on, the sound of footsteps outside seems to be getting louder. Hundreds of ghosts will show up at night, and all the coffins will be carried over there together. If I'm right, the master of ceremony deity will show up in front of the earth temple as he'll take the goods from every ghost couple. Moran asked, there are so many coffins, hundreds of them were walking around town. How come no one else can see them? They can't be seen. Chu Wanning said. The one carrying the coffin are the ghost golden boys and girls. The things on the ghosts make them invisible to ordinary people. Mo Ran asked, how do you know so much? Chu Wanning replied, just now on the side, I used Tianwen to interrogate the golden ghost boy. Mo Ran. After being speechless for a while, he asked again, then what happened with the red coffin dug up on the mountain before where young master Chen was? Why did the Chen family die one after another? Chu Wanning, I don't know. Mo Ran was a little surprised, Golden Ghost Boy didn't tell you. Chu Wanning, the Golden Ghost Boy said it wasn't clear either. Mo Ran again. After a moment of silence, Chu Wanning spoke up, but I think that there's something the family hasn't told us. How so? You have to remember that the thing worshipped in this earthen temple is a deity. After a while, it has become sentient and needs to rely on human offerings in order to grow stronger by the day. Mo Ran did not listen carefully to Chu Waning's lectures in his last life, so when he encountered some things later, he would always lack the necessary information about it. In this life, it was better to ask for advice humbly, so he asked, what about this deity's powers? What were you doing last month when we were talking about the difference between deities, ghosts, gods, and demons? Mo Ran thought to himself, this venerable one is reborn, this venerable one can't remember what he was doing during classes that happened ten years ago. But in reality, what he had done last month was to pick up his feet to read the cover of Upstream of Nine Dragons and One Phoenix and he was either staring at Chi Mei in a daze or staring at Chu Wanning's neck, secretly making gestures about how to cut off the man's head. Chu Wanning said coldly, when we get back, go and copy the six realms of insight ten times. Ugh the cost of playing truant was painful. There are many differences between gods and deities. Gods act freely, while deities are all bound and intervene in mundane affairs. They must be thought of and prayed to by people. Mo Ran was astonished, so the Chen family's murder case was only done because someone begged for it. Chu Wanning's voice seemed very frigid in the dark. I think that the ones who begged for it might not necessarily be still alive. Mo Ran opened his mouth but didn't have a chance to ask anything else. The golden children carrying the coffin probably came across a steep slope. The coffin shook and tilted to the right. The sudden shaking, coupled with the smooth surface of the coffin, meant there was nowhere to grab onto. Mo Ran rolled over and crashed into the arms of his Shizun. Ah! Uh. Holding his painful nose, Mo Ran raised his head, trying to figure out the situation. A faint scent of Haitang wafted into his nose. The scent was as light as the morning mist, and it was still tinged with some of the coolness of the night. The fragrance from the illusion had been strange, but this smell was sobering and refreshing. Mo Ran froze, and then suddenly stiffened. He was way too familiar with the scent of this flower. It was the scent of Chu Wanning, and for Mo Ran, this scent was always entangled with desire. In an instant, a certain deep-rooted evil thought appeared like a thunderstorm brought on by a forest fire, and with a bang, it rushed into his head. 
End chapter